from where we came this year, it's been a, a journey from zigzags all over the place. And the, this competition was so tough with the increased skill set that was coming back into the NBL. And um, I'm just so proud of the guys. Kept it together through the bad times. You know, we have um, we had some adversity early in the season, and we managed to pull through and get some games. And then late, we started to uh, get it together. And you know, it's just the, the bigger the game, the more pressure. Um, our guys step up every single time, and um, just so proud of the guys how they performed uh, all through the playoffs to you know go five and zip, which is uh, which is a hell of a performance against this league. Well, it's one of the best performances I've seen. Uh, we talked about Bryce just being aggressive and he was quick, he was shooting trees, he was, you know, dishing for dunks. It was, uh, you know, that's one of the best performances. And I just thank goodness he was playing for us, you know, on the had the red top on. So, you know, well and truly deserved. We, he carried us for, uh, to get that offensive ticking over and, and Wollongong played a, a great game. Uh, they should be very proud of themselves too. Uh, well, I tried to put you guys off as much as I could, uh, pretty much when he came back. But it was just, um, you know, and, and then we talked about who we're going to start. And that was, do we bring Jesse or Gus in? And um, I really like their energy off the bench. And Sean came in and started and didn't miss a treat. That's, that's the ultimate. Sean is the ultimate professional. Sometimes he doesn't get into the last quarter. Some days he plays two minutes. Some, today is probably the most minutes he's played for a long, long time. And um, him just to put everything aside and do what's best for the team is just a credit to him. And so happy that we could uh, send him out with a, with another ring and, um, and to cut down the net. Sean, 10 weeks ago, did you think you'd be in this position getting a fourth ring and retiring on a high like you had? You know, it, there was always belief within the group. Uh, you know, I've been around this team uh, for, a, for a long time to know that we, we have the capabilities. Um, you know, I think once we, we brought in Bryce in that first game versus Sydney, you could just see there was a, uh, you know, he, what he brought to the team and just fitted in really well. And, you know, credit to the guys. I think uh, our, our season and the way we played, especially come big time games, um, you know, it's, uh, it's great to see guys step up uh, when, when it matters. And, you know, credit to, uh, to the team and the heart that we showed all year. Uh, you can't you can't write those scripts uh, and to, to be able to be a uh, it's a dream come true. I mean uh, to uh, finish your career on a win with the championship um, with these guys that uh, you know we've uh, we've gone to battle for so many times uh, to be out on that court and to be able to help the team uh, it, it feels great and you know something that I'll uh, I'll cherish for the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, there was just a wave of emotions uh, going through that. Uh, you know, I'm thankful we we're a little comfortable at the very end. You could kind of soak up that last 30 seconds. And, uh, you know, I'm proud to be a Wildcat. I'm proud to be a part of this team. And uh, it's, uh, it's an honor to, uh, to, to represent the Wildcats. Um, and, you know, it's, it's something I'll, uh, I'll cherish for the rest of my life. Some of the players are trying to talk you out of retirement say come back next year and go for three feet. <laughs> the day's early. The day's early. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're all they're all special. I don't think you can kind of choose one or the other. But uh, the way this team came back, I mean, I don't know where we were in December. Someone said we were last, uh, somewhere seventh, eighth, and uh, you know we battled. We we you know there the, take a lot of pride in this one uh, to be able to stick around through through what we uh, faced and, and how tough this league is. I mean, you had that third import and and you look at the teams and how deep they are. It's, uh, it's there's incredible talent out there in the league. What do you think the future holds now for the Wildcats? I'm just uh, you know I, I'm just proud to, that we won this championship and be a part of this team and and just soak this all up. So you know the the future's bright. We've got some great players, and uh, you know I'll be, uh, you know I'll be, uh, um, it'll be weird sitting in the crowd next year, but I'll be cheering uh, these guys on, and uh, you know a tremendous amount of respect for for this team and these guys and the way Damo captained this team this year. You know he should be proud of, uh, 
you know, the, the positivity that he showed and, and what, uh, what we've been able to accomplish this year. Yeah, since we've returned from Illawarra, we've just been so switched on and keyed in on, you know, our individual assignments, the style of play we think will be uh, beneficial us scoring and to be able to put it all out there and start the way we did. You know, after the first two games, they jumped on us early, so we really had a focal point of, you know, throwing the first punch, as they'd say, the cliche. But it was a dream start. But in saying that, some other teams may have folded and we've been fortunate enough to win grand finals in the deciding game, you know, by big margins. Credit to Illawarra. You know, they were down 12 zip, as you mentioned, but then they came flying back at us. And it's a team game. You're not supposed to point at individuals, but Rodney Clark, he was spectacular tonight. Uh, he kept him in there for long periods of time, and then other guys stepped up around him. So we have a lot of respect for Illawarra. We've had great battles in the past, and even though we were up 12 zip, we would have loved to have built that, built that to a 20 point lead, but we knew they're more than capable, which they showed of bringing it back. And, you know, they pushed us right to the final minute. Yeah, it was very special. There's been a few games in particular where I find myself actually out on the court but watching the game. Uh, and tonight was one of them. There was times where you could give Bryce the ball and almost be a spectator even though you're on the court. And some of the possessions he came up with, the shots he made, were just out of this league. It was just spectacular to watch and a privilege to be a part of. But to do it and the stage he did um, was just amazing. And that's why I think it goes down as the most special performance I've been a part of with an individual. Um, and you know, a month ago he turned down a 10-day contract to go to the NBA, try his luck where I think he's more than capable of playing. And tonight he gave us 45 reasons why we're very glad he said no to that and stuck around. Trev, do you see any, any way possible going to the Glass for next season? Uh, look, I think his place is in the NBA. You know, I think he's a Paddy Mills kind of player to come off the bench and energise. He can shoot, uh, obviously another ball handler. So I'll be surprised that there's not a couple of knocks on the door like real soon. Um, and that's... Sometimes you get players that are that good and then they're so engrossed in their self, but Bryce is the ultimate unselfish guy. And, and what Damo said, the unselfishness to say, no, I want to stay here and play out the season with us and not go to the NBA on a 10-day a contract, that's, um, that's one of the most selfless things that I've ever seen. And that just went through the team that if he's prepared to do that for us, um, you know, that, that just what the culture here at the Wildcats is and uh, we're so proud of him to come out and have a game like that today and, and look we'd love to have him back don't get me wrong but I don't think he's going to be back some teams when they go back to back they already start thinking about repeat how about yourself how I'm thinking about a shave <laughs> that's what I'm thinking right now so um, yeah look we'll we'll uh, we'll do that we'll enjoy this this is this has been a very hard working championship to get through the quality so emotional with Sean his last game. Um, you know, surgeries at Domo, Matty's out, and got charges against Greg and Matt, and it's just been a roller coaster. Um, just so uh, proud of the guys, how they performed under pressure. We'll enjoy this for at least tonight, and then we'll talk about that tomorrow. Who's the theory in the middle of the season? We've got a bit shaky. I know mm. Nick Marvin came out and gave you a lot of support. Did you feel at all under pressure because it was such a unique season? What was happening? I think it was uh, like a whammy all of a sudden. You know, we had three point guards out, so Casey had to play some point guard. We just then we picked up Mason from Tasmania that's played in the minor leagues to come and help us. We got uh, Jackson Hussey as well. You know, to start we had our DP Corbin Rowe start a number of games for us because we had no point guard. So that period of time was hard, and we were losing just marginally and. We, I, I felt the chemistry wasn't right with our imports and so we made a tough decision and that can go south. You know, you get the wrong guy in, the wrong attitude and it could go south pretty much in a hurry. So, look, there was a fair bit of pressure around that Christmas period but, uh, look, we hang tough and made sure we got the right person to bring in. Yeah, look, I just remember the next morning getting about seven calls overnight I've missed and I thought, oh, what's going on here? I really thought a Russian team wanted him for a half a million dollars or something. Then I talked to his agent and I said, oh, how are we going to go with this? And um, look, we just talked it and Bryce said, look, I'm, I'm not ready to do that. I want to keep on playing here. Over there, he'd be sitting on the bench. But um, 
you know, hopefully you'll get that opportunity real soon. So I know Sean, if you're in the same situation as you say. See you, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have to. Uh, I don't get missed calls thinking it's from the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that was amazing. Sure, you oh, no, mate's here. He, he has been... You know, I was very close to walking away from the game four years ago and then I got a call to come over to interview. So I was very fortunate to, to come in and coach these guys that play the right way. You know, they share the ball. They, there's no egos in there. Um, you know, it's, uh, this is why you coach basketball, to coach a, a bunch of guys like this. I spoke to Andrew Vlahov yesterday on radio. He was saying to me that uh, he reckons he, this is probably the greatest sporting franchise in Australia, if not the world, if you say about the game most yeah, well, you look, 31, is it 31 or 30? I don't know. They just tell me it's don't miss the finals. Um, uh, look, and, and just, uh, look, I've only been here for a blink of a time for four years, and I've the, the organisation, everyone's on the same page. Um, and when we're going through that tough period, I had to sit down with the board and say, this is my vision, uh, can you back it? And, you know, to their credit, they said, yes, we'll back it in. So, and that's when we made our move. We could have been, you know, sitting outside the finals and watching this game evolve. So everybody's on the same page. It's not, people aren't in it for their self. Um, Jack, that comes down from the, the top and everyone's unselfish. And when we do that, we get great rewards because we were prepared to sacrifice the little things for the betterment of the team. Dano, talk us through the beers. Who came up with that idea and how's it been? <laughs> Uh, a, a few years ago, we started the tradition, and mm. then, yeah, as soon as you qualify for finals, there's no more shaving, and there's some horrible attempts. Like, I know mine looks horrible, like, just dreadful, but Jared Kenny, I don't know what's <laughs> going on there. He, he has about four that have popped up, but, yeah, there'll be a lot of happy guys, uh, or more so happy wives and girlfriends, mm. that we can shave these off uh, and get back to being, you know, husbands and fathers and moving on. But it's just one of those things that everyone buys into. It brings us closer together. We have a bit of a laugh about it. Uh, and yeah, now we'll show up in the next few days with some freshly shaven guys. How do you celebrate? What do you do? You hang out here, do you go out? What, what's, what's the premium? Yeah, I, I think it's line? important to initially spend it just with the, you know, the coaches and the playing group. Uh, you know, you've been through everything together on, on and off the court, all the adversity. So initially just be those guys and then we'll bring in our wives and girlfriends um, and children. And it's just a very special moment to have them in the locker room. And then we go out and say thank you to all the supporters, whether it's corporates, whether it's the Red Army. And so we'll probably be at the arena for another couple of hours and spending time with those that have you know, made tonight possible, whether it's you know, teammates, whether it's coaches, whether it's the big part of the Red Army, the players in the Red Army. And Sean, sure, just on behalf of the media, thanks for being such a great talent for us mate, over the years. You've been fantastic, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been an honour.